So our first organization is Ave in a Moat. I'd like to invite Emily, Justine, and Tony to come up and present. I want to make sure I'm operating this correctly. Hold on. <laughs> All right, good. So good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to come and present before you. We're super excited, and we're looking forward to networking with you after the event uh, and after the presentations. Uh, my name is Tony, and I'm here with two of my colleagues, Emily and Justine, and we're here to represent Amount. Uh, Amount is a business-to-business -business SaaS organization located in the Loop. Uh, we about, have about 320 employees total, and we started our business officially January 1st of 2020. So some of you might be wondering, how do you have 320 employees in one month? Now, I would like to say we have like an amazing recruiting organization, but that's not so much the case. In order to understand where Amount came from, we have to go back to the originations of Avant, which is the company we came from. So in December of 2012, Avant uh, started out by our three founders who were Al Goldstein, John Sun, and Paul Zhang. And what they realized was that there was an opportunity to lower the barriers and the cost of credit to middle uh, class consumers, specifically those who had credit scores from like 600 to 700. So what they realized is that they can go ahead and create this technology and leverage it to help people out to get their loans. So what they did is they go ahead and they started the business in December 2012 and it grew. And by 2015, we had issued a billion dollars in loans. And it was at that point that the proverbial light bulb went off in our head and they realized we have something really good here. We have technology that we created in Avant that can go ahead and be leveraged to assist other banks in entering the uh, digital banking industry. So they grew. And what we ended up going is that we ended up marketing the product, the technology that was created at Avon. It was called PBA, which is an acronym that stood for Powered by Avon. So we set out to go ahead and get new bank partners. And in 2015, we, or I'm sorry, 2016, we got our first bank partner of Virtuals Regions. In 2017, we landed our second bank partner, which was Elo. But 2017 was also a huge moment because we also started our credit card product. And that also allowed us to understand what some of the pain points were in issuing credit cards. So not only were we using the technology to create loans, but also to uh, facilitate the, uh, the getting of credit cards as well. So then in 2018, we ended up getting our third partner, which is TD. Then in 2019, we ended up landing a few more partners, which are HSBC, PNC, and a few others. So it's really been ramping up over the past couple of years, and it's been really exciting. So what ended up happening is that PBA got rebranded it was called Amount in 2019. And as of January 1st, 2020, Amount and Avant split. Again, Amount being the B2B SaaS business, where Avant became the business to uh, consumer business. And here is just a list of our current bank partners that we have. I'll now go ahead and pass it on to my colleague, Emily. Uh, I'm Emily. I am on um, the data operations team. Basically, data is comprised of four teams. We have data operations, data product, which is kind of like business intelligence. And then we have data services and data management. So I'll talk about data product and data operations after this. Um, so data services is responsible for kind of like the tooling and the architecture that um, Avant and the rest of the company and our, our partners use. Um, they own and support the data lake, our infrastructure, and um, also the ETL our data quality processes and our, all of our like, analytics. Um, data management is responsible for more of the modeling, also architecture and like ETL stuff. Um, and also data government. So they work with prod dev and um, some of our other uh, data services teams to produce kind of the like final data sets that we do a lot of our reporting and analytics on. Uh, so data operations and data product, um, that's kind of where, where I sit. Um, and we're responsible for more of the top of line tools like all of our um, reporting that goes to our bank partners that we do through Looker. Um, any ad hoc reporting that they ask us for. Um, all the dashboards and visualizations. Um, and then also kind of investigating and debugging uh, issues that might arise in the company on other teams. Um, and then aside from those three teams, we also have our policy monitoring team, and they're responsible for kind of uh, building and maintaining the um, automated monitoring that we have over all of our data after ETL. And that's just to make sure that everything is within company policy, 
regulatory guidelines and then also whatever the individual policies that each of the banks have set for us um, for their like service level agreements. Um, and then we also make sure that like Avant's portfolio is um, working correctly and that we aren't like overcharging people for interest and we look into any issues there that we may need to create additional monitoring for to make sure that, that our portfolio stays um, in line with all of the agreements that we have. And I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you so much. There was one last thing you could want to say. Currently, if you're interested in looking for positions, there's about 40 different positions open at amount right now. And they do vary in tech and non tech. So if you're interested by home and supply, we'd be happy to uh, review your resume. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Kartik up from Granger. Hi everyone, I'm Karthik and I'm part of the Granger, WW Granger. We are, unlike uh, the company that presented before us, we are almost a 90 year old firm, so quite a big leap there. However, uh, let's just not uh, go by uh, how old we are, how established we are in the market. These are certain numbers that will help us project a picture of where we are at. So primarily we are in the business to business uh, segment where we uh, sell products on our platform through different channels ranging from uh, industrial supplies to office supplies in the business to business segment. So our customer is as small as a customer running a shop in a garage to as big as someone, a fortune uh, 500 company. So uh, in revenue, we are somewhere around $11 billion, approximately three and a half million customers there. So quite some uh, volume there. So here in this particular team that I represent, we are from the analytics and data team. We are uh, responsible for analyzing the data that uh, is produced through different channels in Granger, including email, marketing, uh, direct mails that go out. So any sort of data that gets churned out in the uh, by uh, our business is processed in our team. Primarily speaking, further down uh, the road, it's divided into marketing analytics, strategic analytics, data science, and then digital analytics. So. Uh, I'm aware that uh, uh, in the coursework we learn all these uh, modern day technologies like regression, clustering. So let me tell you that uh, it's been uh, all these techniques get applied every day. So every typical, uh, sorry, a typical day, not a day, but a typical work week uh, would range from working on somewhere in uh, segmenting your customers based on the requirement of your business group or to the level of predicting that, okay, what's the likelihood or revenue that you can acquire from this particular location we are situated at. And also to the even level of click stream analytics, which is also a very hot space where everyone's competing in the digital media space. Uh, in terms of the business partners, so uh, being uh, in the analytics and data space is quite exciting because we get to work with a diverse uh, business groups. So at one point you'll have one day probably working with the email team or the other day you'll be working with probably the HR team to analyze the HR data. So they have a problem and we are the solvers. So if that excites you, churning out big data and then using all these new techniques and giving out meaningful and not just meaningful, actionable insights in business terms. That's where we are in that, in that space. To understand, these are some of the, uh, this was just a, a snippet to understand the typical work in, that goes in and the typical output that we produce for our business users. So uh, just another example, uh, recently this got concluded where we were looking at our customers in terms of uh, how their uh, behavior uh, 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 varies from a geographical location located in uh, one region of the United States to the other. So these are just an example of to understand the complexity of problems and uh, uh, the level of sophistication that goes in in uh, uh, addressing these problems and then conveying these uh, findings in are non to a non-technical audience. So that's another part of the job that uh, we guys are responsible for. Uh, talking of the tools and techniques, so we use all the uh, advanced open source tools that are available out there in the public domain. Also certain proprietary tools like uh, SPSS 
and uh, uh, anything i mean the team is uh, fairly comfortable as long as the person who's doing that job is comfortable in say r or python or spss it's your job to just take up that tool and just implement it and find the solution that you're looking for or the teams are looking for so right now uh, coming down to something that might interest everyone here is that we are out here to look for interns for our summer 2020 program a little bit about our internship program. So it's roughly a 10 to 12 week uh, uh, long duration program where not just in analytics and data, we have interns from other departments as well. And then uh, specifically speaking, you get aligned with the uh, one of our team members, one of uh, our team members, and then you work on a project in that 12 week duration. And uh, I think fairly, uh, there's. Uh, I remember there was one intern from DePaul uh, last year uh, in our team. I'm not sure uh, which uh, school or she came from but yes she was actively involved in one of the projects and that's in production and we are taking uh, steps to implement uh, her recommendations so not just the during the internship program the work will be uh, visible it will be impactful and yes it's not going to be any uh, toy project where you someone might be working on a project it it's a real project that someone will be, uh, be working on other side of the internship program is that uh, uh, there'll be other uh, activities, lunch and learns with the leadership team, also uh, field <coughs> visits to our uh, uh, offshore, uh, off-sites, I'm sorry for that, off-site uh, distribution centers to understand how this space works. So this is the link for that. Uh, if anyone wants to take a picture of it, feel free to uh, uh, take it and uh, we'll be uh, in the networking event. So if you have any questions, welcome there. Thank you. Yeah. Next, I would like to welcome down Monica from 09 Solutions. Monica is joining us from Dallas, so it's a little colder here than probably what it was when she left Texas. It is. I'm actually from this area. I graduated from Millican University with my bachelor's degree. I just flew in from Texas today, and it is cold here, you guys. <laughs> like, I went and bought the sweater, in fact, I'm like, oh shoot, I didn't really pack. So I'm, um, again, thank you so much. My name is Monica Hodgeberg. Um, I am here representing Onai Solutions, but at the end of the day, I'm a people person. I'm a professional technology recruiter. I've done it for over 15 years, and I absolutely love it. Um, I started my relationship with Onai Solutions actually way back, like, 11, 12, 13 years ago, has, has anybody here heard of I2 technologies? Raise your hands if you would. Okay. So, yeah. so I2 technologies is a company that was eventually acquired by Jenga. Um, it was a really um, cutting edge technology at the time that was developed by uh, Sanji Sidhu. How much do you know about it? Can you like add some? Uh, quite a bit. We, uh, that's a short for another time. We can get up with people. Okay, so one highlight about I2 would be what? Like, in terms of like what it contributed to the supply chain management and um, analytics at the we time. We would suggest that uh, JDA is a, a phenomenal platform but requires uh, deep thought such that you can actually extract the value on top of that platform. That's what I2 helped deliver. There you go. I2 helped deliver that. Sanjeev Sidhu is a visionary um, who is in the supply, he's an entrepreneur and visionary. He developed IT technologies, again, acquired by JDA. 09 Solutions is sort of a 2.0 iteration of part of his genius. Um, since I've been recruiting so long, I got to help hire people for, people for IT technologies, and then I developed my own business. 09 retained me about a year ago, and I've actually accepted a full-time position with 09 because I absolutely believe in what's happening. Um, I can tell you all about them, but you know what, there are videos and amazing things. I definitely encourage you to Google Sanjeev Sidhu. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more, but I also want to learn a little bit about you. So I want to know who's in the room and what you're up to. So you guys are, are you all master students and you're in your bachelor's students? Help me, help me know who's in the room. MBA students, business analytics, and then we invited our friends from the College of Digital Media and Community um, Media and Design. So awesome. Yeah, and okay, brilliant. So who's going to be looking for an internship soon? Raise your hands if you would. Awesome. So if you guys could give me kind of, I'm just going to crowdsource the things that are important to you as you are looking and evaluating opportunities. 
places to go, people to learn from, where you can apply what you have learned. What are your top, say, three priorities in, in identifying and what you want to get out of an internship? If you just kind of raise your hand. First thought, best thought. Like, what's important? Learning exposure. Right. Learning exposure. Yeah, elaborate just a little bit on that. Um, an opportunity where I get to learn. Um, also bring in, if I have some experience, previous experience, bring that on board and have a very um, two-way learning process. Great. A win-win. place where you can add value and also learn and, and explore. Perfect. What else is important? place where you can apply what you're learning, right? Like how is it really, like where's the rubber meeting the road? How can you really land what you've got in theory into adding value in business? One more thing, what else? So further understand the company and the role. So in an internship, I feel like we can understand if that's the set that we want in a company. So understand the culture, network, is that what I want? Is this environment, do I want a bigger company, do I want a smaller company? And then also the role, right? So explore one role and see, is that the career path I want to follow? Do I want to mentor you? Do I want to get to know other departments within this company? Beautiful, right. So really get to go and see it and feel it and know like, again, do you belong in a big, huge company or a smaller company and things like that. Let me, like, I'm going to kind of leap from there. Thank you so much because 09 is growing very dynamically and very rapidly. And my team and I are helping to develop an, an um, internship program. So I really want to know it's really important to really have a high quality, something that's structured where it really is that immersive type of experience for bright, well educated people like you guys. Um, so just a little bit about 09, and again, you can learn all about the technology. It's very revolutionary, it's very cutting edge in the artificial intelligence, supply chain management, optimization space. Um, we've won huge awards at Gartner, and that's a really big deal. We are still a small, very quickly growing company. So I'm gonna speak just a moment to the culture, because that's so important because you guys are like learning right now, you're getting your degrees, and then you're gonna make choices like where you're gonna go like out into the world, where you're gonna give your time, your creativity, your imagination, your heart. You're gonna be making that decision like what do you want to align with? What company, what big dream, what big vision do you wanna give your talent to, right? Because that's really what it is. Um, 09 Solutions, the reason I'm here is because of the big why. Supply chain management technology has the opportunity to answer the big questions, the big problems that need to be solved. So environmental um, waste, uh, those kinds of things. So supply chain management optimization and artificial intelligence have the capacity to pull trucks off the road that don't need to be there, to reduce waste that is just not helping anyone, uh, to reduce overproduction of product that's going into landfills. Etc. So when I sat down with the president of the company a little over a year ago and I asked him, clearly you're giving your 100% every single day. That's evident. Why? And his response to me was because th what I just said. The reason we're doing this is because we have in our hands tools, technologies that can help the big, big questions, the big problems. Right? So you guys are all people who love to solve problems, right? That's what analytics is. So then when we can apply that to the big, big problems that need to be solved, that's really a purpose. I can wake up every single day and show up at work and know that I'm contributing to that bigger why. And that's what I want to be part of. And I solutions from a culture perspective is some of the smartest, most heartful people I've ever worked with. Um, visionary, hardworking, the values of 09 is absolutely putting the client, it's like we're there to add value to clients, like to our customers, to help businesses do business better. And that is consistent over and over and over again. It's not just lip service. So the values, the people, the big why, that's why I'm at 09 Solutions. And just to give you an idea of the size, 
The other piece is it's really fun to be part of something like at the ground level. Um, when I started in Dallas um, recruiting for 09, there were 55 people in the Dallas office. We have grown, and I've been the only recruiter for 2019, we've grown to 150 just in this past year. And then that's the same that's happening globally. We're in Amsterdam, we're in Japan, we're in India, we're in China. And so now we're just right, almost at 500. So that's still like a tiny company in comparison to like a JDA or something like that. So I feel like I'm part of something. I know I'm part of something. And that is another thing that you'll be thinking about as you're evaluating what. What do you want to do when you are graduating? So that's a little bit about the culture. Um, do I have any more time? I didn't do a... You're good. Am I good? like about a minute left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do we want to talk about? Um, what questions do you have for me? I'm a recruiter, so if you want to ask me a question, please do. And it can be about 09 or it can be about like something else if you have it. Yeah. How has it been recruiting business analytics professionals? Do you feel like the demand has been growing? How is the offer? Like, were you able to find those professionals? How, how is that experience? Yeah, so that's a great question. I will say too that for like from a business analytics perspective, we the technologies that we look for, kind of the baseline ones are SQL, Python, and R. Those are kind of the three hot hot buttons there. And then of course supply chain management. Um, so how is it? There's a lot of talented people out there. Um, so how do we do that? Well, and I'll give you exam an example. I got to speak with at SMU last week, and it was a room like this, which is, and I love this. Um, and I'll tell you what, two of them are already hired <laughs> at 09 Solutions. They've already had gotten offers and accepted it. So where I saw them on Tuesday, I had a hiring event that Saturday. They came into the process. We said, yes, we want you. They said, yes, I want you too. And they got a letter and they signed, and now they're joining in June of 2020. So, um, yeah, tell me a little bit more specific, like, in terms of... Yeah, yeah, no, I, I like your answer. Thank you for uh, pointing the, the the tools that we should be looking at. I think it's uh, meaningful for us. Uh, no, but, yeah, I think my, my question was very general, and I think you did a good answer. Yeah, but it's just like you're going to be looking at, like, with the, the different companies. It's really that culture match. It's like, you know, the genuine curiosity you know, the, you know that you the teamwork, those those different intangibles, as well as the technological skills, of course. So those are yeah some things we look for. But we get to like spend more time together yes. doing one on one, right? Absolutely. So we'll be we'll be here. Thank you so much for your time and thanks for welcoming me. Next up, we've got our friends from Palmerol Partners. I'd like to introduce John and Dom. Good evening. Thank you all for attending. Hopefully not too many of you have to leave right at 5.30. I will try to keep it to my five minutes. Uh, so Pomerol Partners, we're a data and analytics consulting company. Uh, so we hired Dom out of this event from last year. So we do hire people from DePaul. Um, people ask me what I do and if I want to stop the conversation in its tracks, I say I do data and analytics consulting and they go like, Okay, you're a nerd, I'm leaving. Uh, so I tell people when I want to have a conversation, I say, we help companies simplify data so that they can grow. All right? People say, well, what industry are you in? I say, well, we're in healthcare. We've got a candy company. We've got a chicken company. We've got a metal distributor. We've got a, a, a medical device manufacturer, some of the top tier banks. We do everything, right? And the, the name of this group is business analytics, right? It's not analytics business. That's what we do. We're in the analytics business. But we do business analytics. To us, what's important is somebody that's willing to, to go and start talking to people, understand the, understand the business, understand what the key drivers are, help them figure out how to simplify that data down so that they can make better decisions. That's how we provide value. So what tools do we use? We use automated machine learning platforms like DataRobot, Cortical. Uh, Dom's got experience with R and Python and you know all that stuff. Everybody needs to have good SQL skills if they're gonna do that. 
Uh, but, but really at the end of the day, our job as consultants is to go in, get somebody comfortable, go talk to Sally in accounting, go talk to Bill in shipping, get them to be comfortable with you so that they can explain their challenges and then you can help them figure out how to actually measure that, make better decisions and help them grow. Uh, in terms of work environment, I, I, I used to joke that this was like the consultant uniform, you know, the jeans and the, uh, the blazer. Uh, then I heard it referred to as the business mullet. So <laughs> business on the top, party on the bottom. Uh, but our, our work environment is, is very casual when we're at the office. Um, you know, if you come by in the summer, you'll see me in shorts and a t-shirt. Uh, if you come by in the winter, I'll probably be wearing something more covering, warmer. Um, <laughs> the heat went out the other day, so we had to get a new furnace. It was really cold then, so you'd see me wearing a coat. Uh, but it's ultimately, it's a really casual environment. Uh, I brought Dom along with me to just talk a little bit more about the culture of, uh, of Pomerol. Uh, and just one thing before I turn that over, who here knows what Pomerol is? Got a couple of wine drinkers in the back. So Pomerol <laughs> is named after the Pomerol region in France, which is known for high quality wines that are very expensive. So we're not trying to get out there and, and do a bunch of staff augmentation work and bury people on projects. We're trying to get out there and do analytics strategies. Uh, we've got a program rolling out soon called Analytics to Win. It's a very compact data strategy engagement that then turns into identifying a whole bunch of different projects that we can work on. So, um, so yeah, with that, I'll kick it over to Dom so we stay on time. Awesome. My name is Dominic Almaraj. Really excited to be here. Uh, a lot of the work I do really revolves around AI and machine learning, so that can go anywhere from forecasting sales for a client to predicting when a certain outcome will happen for them, such as customer churn. Uh, I think one of the coolest parts from joining Parnell Partners was in my master's program, well, I learned a lot of R, Python, a lot of the skills that make me ready for this job. But once I actually stepped in, I learned tools such as Data Robot, Click, Cortical, all these different tools that we may not you know, get exposure to in the classroom, we're able to get and learn these tools and really help organizations uh, implement them. Um, you know, in a, it's a small company, it's a growing company, so we really get close to the people that we work with, and it's also a good opportunity where you can come in um, with the skills that you learn in the classroom and really make an impact. Um, so you know, we're looking to grow a lot, so if you want to you know, join a company where you can make an impact and kind of grow that story, this is a good opportunity for you. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, John and Dom. And to conclude just the presentation part, I'd like to bring up our friends from Walgreens, Andy and Lisa. Great. There we go. Thanks for having us. And being the guy between us and a happy hour, I'm trying to keep this pretty tight. So I'm hoping everybody can leave with a couple things. One, learn something about Walgreens they might not have known before. Then learn a little bit about more what we're doing with data. So I have the privilege of leading our supply chain planning execution for all Walgreens in North America. And as part of that, our uh, uh, supply chain analytics team. So let's talk about Walgreens. So at the core, we're a healthcare company. And we're really big. And so some numbers about that. Oh, no, build slide. Who does that? OK. <laughs> so. We've got coming on 9,500 stores within the U.S., about 14,000 globally. Uh, what Lisa and my team are responsible for is forecasting 200 million item store combinations and what they're going to sell every day to make sure the right inventory flows in the end-to-end -end supply chain. Now, there's really cool ways that we get to do that. We get to do that with the single largest loyalty program in the United States. 90 million active users telling us what they buy where they're buying it, when they're buying it, and putting that together. The supply chain is the largest user of data in all of Walgreens. And we, have, we create petabytes every couple of months of data that we get to use all the fancy toys that everybody's talked about on top of that. Lisa's leading all of our artificial intelligence and machine learning attributes about how we deploy the plumbing and strategies for our supply chain to, to make that go. But if you look at the, the overall platform, we're serving 8 million customers every day through our doors. Right? So touching a lot of lives. What really connects me to working at Walgreens, I've been at Walgreens, started as a supply chain analyst right out of school, is the fact that whatever we do, we're going to impact people immediately, especially within our supply chain. And you can see the results 
and anything multiplied by 9,000 is really big. So if you like making a big impact, small changes can make really big impacts. So if we keep going, the other reason I would really like working for Walgreens is corporate social responsibility of a firm and the, the assets that we bring to bear. So uh, some of my favorite programs here are, are Give a Shot, Get a Shot, Give a Shot. So for every flu shot that's uh, received out of Walgreens from one of our pharmacists, we actually donate immunizations through the UN and have been celebrated by the UN as a global partner for donating those same level of immunizations uh, throughout Southeast Asia and Africa. Uh, our Vitamin Angels campaign, so we partner with uh, an NGO called Vitamin Angels. 1% uh, of all of our sales of vitamins go directly to that. For 25 cents, you can give dosages of vitamin A to a child in, again, Southeast Asia or, or Africa, and it prevents blindness, right? And so we've impacted there at, at a quarter of dosage, 200 million children so far for that program, and it's more to come, and that's only been in a couple of years. Same thing with Red Nose Day, we've raised over $200 million for fighting childhood poverty throughout the world. And so, uh, it's just a wonderful platform for what we can do. Again, I'm the only thing between us and a couple of drinks, so let's keep this going. So we're really excited to talk about um, areas of opportunity within our firm, especially within our supply chain data analytics practice that, that we head up. Um, when we look at, at opportunities that we have, we have everything from internships to analytics roles, uh, full-time uh, and business process managers. What I think is really fascinating about or different about Walgreens and, and everything that we do is that we embed the ownership directly with the data and analytics. So we don't have a data and analytics shop over to the side, crunch some numbers, and then giving recommendations. Now we give direct control to our analysts to actually drive the outcomes that their analysts recommend. And so that, that's a really empowering area, which is why we steer for business process managers who can do everything with big data. So we're really excited to talk to everybody here um, and understand where you're going and what your interests are and what it may intersect with Walgreens and help you enforce for good. Thanks, Andy. Um, for the students that need to go to class, if you don't mind filling out your surveys, I have a few of my colleagues, Adrian, um, Meg, and Jess standing up here. Um, if you don't mind handing those in. Um, but the rest of you, if you want to bring them upstairs um, and fill them out during the happy hour, you're more than welcome to do that. So you are excused to go up to the 11th floor. Employers, um, myself and Dana, will walk you guys up to where you need to go. So thank you.